Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, saints of RPA. Hallelujah. Oh, mighty God, let's bow our heads in prayer. Jesus, thank you for your word, which will go forth in power, changing lives, God, tonight. Change our lives. We open ourselves, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this is kind of a conglomeration of a couple messages. God didn't just give me one message, but he gave me a couple. And I'm like, how does this fit together? He does weird things with me. But I will say this, that the meekness message that pastor preached hit me between the eyes. It just hit me really hard. I thought, oh, Jesus, Lord, what do you have for tonight? And the, the key scripture that we'll be uh, looking at tonight, um, God's used lots of times with me, but I never saw it in this way. And the title is Humble Ourselves. So the key scripture is 1 Peter 5, 6. 1 Peter 5, 6. Turn in your iPhones, your Bible, whatever. <laughs> iPad. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. We have to humble ourselves. And that means to humiliate ourselves. We have to be a fool for Christ. We have to allow ourselves to get out of the way so that the Holy Ghost can have his way. Amen. And in the previous scripture, the, the Holy Ghost is saying to submit to the elder. If you can go back one scripture, please. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject to one another and clothed with humility. God resisteth the proud and giveth the grace to the humble. Submit yourself unto the elder. Whoa. We have to submit. Amen? Amen. There's a command structure in place in the body of Christ, in RPA. There's a command structure. Come on, somebody. There's a command structure of the bride-to-be. And I looked up the word submit. And it's a Greek military term that means to arrange the troops' divisions in a military fashion under the command of a leader. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's what we're learning how to do. We're learning how to step out in command. In command, there's a structure. Just like in the military, there's a structure. There's a structure. There's a structure to any organization. There's a chain of command. Come on, somebody. And I believe God was really dealing with me earlier tonight that one of the things to let go of that the people of God need deliverance from is resistance to authority. Resistance to the command structure. God really dealt with me when I was praying 
over this message tonight at home. God wants to change that tonight. God brought you here for a reason to change you so that you can submit to the authority so that we can be jointly fit together. If you can't say amen, say ouch. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Uh huh. God doesn't give easy messages to me, never has. But I'm going to preach it. So, <laughs> an elder, according to the outline of biblical usage among the Christians, those who presided over the assemblies, uh, the, the New Testament also uses bishop, elders, and presbyters in, in an interchangeable way. Also, it could be a senior in the faith. So, somebody older in Christ. Come on. It's not chronological. Mm -mm. Robert reminded me of that one. We were talking the other day. And, yeah, it's not chronological. You didn't know that this was going to be in my message. <laughs> Your sermon material. <laughs> <laughs> My husband, my kids, open book. But the, we have to be in command structure. Our, our pastor takes his command from Jesus, and then we take our command from him. There's power in that. Let's get a hold of that. There is power in the chain of command. Because if we're not in the chain of command, and, and he asked us to, do, to go over here, and we go over there, and there's something over here, we didn't obey. A part of that is obedience. In the Old Testament scripture, we say, we see that those who are willing and obedient shall eat the good of the land. Right. Willing and obedient. God is looking for willing and obedient hearts tonight to submit to the command structure, to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Looking at Hebrews 13, 17. Says it this way, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, ouch, for they watch for your soul as they must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. So if we want our, our pastor to give account for us with joy, we better obey them. We better obey, listen, and receive the revelation that he is giving to us under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And not only that, it is unprofitable for you. Disobedience is unprofitable. Disobedience is an unprofitable for you. It's un unprofitable. It doesn't work. If we make an investment of all this time praying 
and we're not and we're not stepping in line, that's unprofitable. We wasted a lot of time. Come on. Amen. Just beating our beating our heads against the wall. Boom, 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 boom. <clears throat> we wasted a lot of time. But there's a a command structure in place to teach us so that we can command the angels at a greater level so that we can exercise the authority that he's given to us. Now, I I used to run in the the word of faith circles. And, And a big thing... And that movement was the authority. And, and, but now I see it so much at a deeper level than what was presented. So in, in, in due time, going back up to uh, 1 Peter 5, 6, Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. I look at myself. I look at where God has brought me from. As an example, as a living and breathing example of that, God brought me from witchcraft and being a Hare Krishna to being an ordained man of God preaching. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> the 11th hour message on 11th Street. Come on, somebody. Look what the Lord has done, but look what the Lord is going. Look where the Lord is taking us. Hallelujah. Even better yet, it's good to, to look back. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Ha ha. But oh, looking forward to the rapture and ruling and reigning for eternity. And I believe what God wants us to do tonight is to stand to our feet. Stand to our feet. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Have your way, God. Those who have been touched, those who have been convicted. There's a place at the altar. There's a place at the altar. There's a place at the altar to come. Oh, hallelujah, to break. To break the things of the past. To break the, the bondages that other people put on you that are not of yours. They're not yours. Jesus didn't do it. He came to set you free. He came for freedom tonight. Oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you for healing my body. Thank you that I didn't get sick this last couple of days. Whoa, what happened? 
Wow, right? He's a healer. He's got to be. He's got to be the healer. This church would be empty right now if he wasn't the healer. I wouldn't be standing up here. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This has been an interesting time of preparation. I thought when I got a title really early on and then bits of pieces weeks ago, and then as it came close to today, it kind of stopped. I'm like, where's the rest of the message? And he promised me that he would give me what I needed after I got up here. Part of it I'm going to get while I'm up here. So let's, let's watch for that. <laughs> I'm excited. So praise God. It does tie together. I love it when he confirms his word. A couple of times it's been exactly the same scripture. He always confirms it though. And it sounds like other preachers and ministers, certainly in this church, have really gotten behind this, how can I be a commander now, and researching that, and looking up scriptures, and how do we, how do, we do that? We're all just learning together how to step into that. I don't think it's like, poof, oh, I'm a commander now. We always have to do some things. All of these things have a hook. We always have to do some things. Um, I don't think it's any different here. At least not from what God is, is revealing to me. I wasn't even sure at first the title was going to be Bride Like an Eagle. I know. I didn't, I know. I didn't do that on purpose. For those of you that are laughing. Those of you in my age group that are laughing. Or, or mount up as eagles. You, you choose after, afterwards. Um, if you could bring up my first scripture, Isaiah 40 and 31. And while you do that, thank you. Thank you, RPA family, for yet again allowing me to... Oh, goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, family. Thank my leadership team. And I thank God. I thank God again for using me. I could have never imagined. I could have never imagined. Thank you, Jesus. Use me, God. Isaiah 40 and 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Do you eagerly wait his return? Do you eagerly wait his return? Are you excited that he's coming back? That's how we wait. We're eagerly waiting. We're looking forward to it. How could we not look forward to it? Everything's going to be right. <laughs> Everything's going to be right when he comes back. We must position ourselves for what we're called to do. This commanding angels and overseeing and battles won from a different perspective, from a higher place than we've ever been before. The place where an engaged person would, would battle from, according to the scriptures thus far. We still have to position ourselves for that. We have to position ourselves for that, for what we're called to do. Like an eagle. Remember before we talked about the eagle takes the snake to the air in battle. The eagle takes the snake to the air in battle because the eagle rises above because the spiritual realm and victory is up here. And the snakey battles down here. And the snake in the air has no power. A snake in the air has no power. If you want to take the power away from the snake, from the enemy, demon, whatever's going on, whatever it is you're fighting, because there's battles all through here, take it to the air. You've got to rise above. You've got to rise above. Take the snake to the air. 
the change of scenery, that changes our perspective. I was not in the military, so I don't use a lot of military stories like others do. Wasn't in the military. I'm not entitled to those stories. I am, however, a sports fan. <laughs> and while, while it's much different, I realize they're not um, sacrificing their lives, but when coaches or owners, when they want to oversee an entire battle or an entire game or A versus B, one versus the other, they don't do that from right here in the middle of all of the hustle and bustle. They don't do that right from the line of scrimmage. They do it from above. That guy owns a team. He could have the best seat in the world. He could literally sit with his feet almost on the field and be like right there. But he has to see everything that's going on. You have to rise above to see everything that's going on. If it's like right here and you're focused on right here, how can you command all that if you're not even looking above to what's going on? You have to rise above that. Otherwise, we're going to be, you'll be at a disadvantage. How do we do that? Again, we've heard it so many times. We have to separate. We have to rise above. We have to climb above. I've had conversations with other people, some of the younger people, some with myself. You have to rise above. Why do I always have to rise above? <laughs> Julie, why do I always have to rise above? Somebody else rise above this time. <laughs> One situation after the next. And I don't think it's just like, okay, I'm way above and I'm commanding able angels. We start with this hilltops, right? We've got to get to the top of our own hilltops. Um, and we'll see how other uh, warriors and those men of God did that. Exodus 17, 9. And Moses said unto Joshua, choose us out men and go out fight with Amalek tomorrow. I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. And then again, 1 Samuel 26, 13. Next one about another warrior. Not only was he a great warrior, he was also running for his life. 1 Samuel 26, 13. Then David went over to the other side and stood on the top of a hill afar off, a great space being between them. Now, not only was David a great warrior, commander, and king, he was also running for his life. <laughs> so, kind of out of an element. So, you have to rise above. You have to go to the top of the hill, your hill, whatever that is for you, to oversee the battle whatever it is you're called to oversee. These were strategic positions. There's a reason that they had them go to the top so that you can see. These are examples of the men of God climbing their hills. We need to do that for ourselves. We have to climb our own hills to put ourselves in a strategic position for a strategic view. So what are the things that we need to do to overclimb overcome the hill how do we how do we do that how do we climb the hill that we have sometimes it can be big the battles are real I get it that the battles are real what do we need to overcome to climb it what battles keep us in the muck and the mire of it which ones sometimes in that moment and I know I know I'm not alone when you know now would really be the best time, I see an opportunity that I could rise above, whether it be turning away, walking away, shutting my mouth, or closing whatever, it, whatever needs to happen to walk away from the muck and mire. That's how, you, that's how you rise above. But sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you want to stay there in battle. I don't know why. Sometimes we think long and hard when a, when a spear is thrown at us and it misses what do we do with that? What do you do with that spear? Do you have a collection? Do you throw it back? Can you just not wait to throw it back? Do you think before you throw it back? Yeah. 
that's not how we climb the hill. What's in between us and our position? What's between me and my position to be able to command? What's between me and the top of my hill? Chris talked about obedience. Is it obedience? Is there something God has asked you to do that you haven't done yet? Is there something he's asked me to do that I haven't done yet? Is that keeping me out of the position that I need to be in? To take on this whole new revelation. Are we reading his word to help put us in position? I would think that if he's the commander, there is a command structure. We would need to know what that is. It's in here. I think we have to do that for sure. To get up our own hill to command from. Praying ourselves into a commission of commander. Praying ourselves. Following his word. Following his commandments. If I'm going to command from the commander, I probably should follow his commandments first. Simplified. We know what they are. We all know what the Ten Commandments are. We're keeping them right. I think that would be necessary. That commandment came directly from Jesus. Here's the one that came directly from Jesus. Our commander, John 15 and 12. This is after the ones that Moses took directly from God and gave them to the people. This was directly from Jesus. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you going to let that keep me from my position am I going to let that keep me from the top of my hill so that I have a view so that I can command the way I've been led to I'm not going to let that keep me out of position no if I'm going to be a commander I've got to follow what Jesus commanded Loving one another, forgiving one another. It sounds repetitive. It is repetitive. It's in the Bible several times. <laughs> so it's worth repeating clearly. Does a commander need to follow the clear direction of Jesus? I think so. Pray for one another as we prepare and step in our places of authority. Do you know who you labor amongst? Just looking at yourself and your own hill? Or can reflect back to not only last Wednesday, but the Wednesday before? Putting others before us, always putting others before ourselves. I know that I wasn't the only one sitting there going, whoa, wow, what does that mean? What does that mean? Does that mean indeed? Does that mean I neglect some of my own things? What does that mean? Or does that mean in prayer? Does that mean in ministry? Can that mean right here? I know for me as a minister, sometimes that means right here. Sometimes I have to step out and take a look at others or where there might be needs for ministry. Sometimes as a ministry, you don't have the, we have some licensed ministers here. Sometimes we don't have the liberty of making it all 100% personal. My salvation is personal. Get me wrong. Being filled with the Holy Ghost, my call is very personal. But there are times in ministry where putting another person first means putting me aside and going to you and ministering to you. Doesn't matter that I'm hurting or how it affected me. So that's putting other people first. You know, for sure. So I think it's certainly something I need to, to pray about and continue to be sensitive to God's spirit and let him lead me in that. Because my own understanding, I've messed that one up before. So I want to really, really pay attention. It's raised in the hand. We've all, several of us have messed that up before. Okay. So what's left to overcome? 
for you. I did an entire year of letting go. Got all the way to the end of the year. I still had something to, <laughs> more to let go of. It's like New Year's Eve. <laughs> Tick tock. <sighs> to get us in position that for the next revelation and the next revelation. God, I couldn't have imagined. But we have to take care of what he's asked us to take care of. I have to take care of what he's asked me to take care of. There are people here that need to take care of the things that he's asked you to take care of. Again, to take that next step, like we've heard, that next level, to be in the position that you need to be in when it's time to command. Because when it's time to command, you're not going to have time to get in position. You need to already be in position. I believe that. I believe that in ministry. If you're not already in position, then maybe you wouldn't be able to get that opportunity. So how, gosh, how do we take care of everything at one time? Just one thing at a time, through Jesus. Through Jesus, what is, what is that? What is it that he's asked me to do that I haven't done yet? Am I all the way at the top of the hill that I'm to climb by overcoming one thing at a time, one prayer at a time, one healing at a time, one sacrifice at a time? What's left? for you to do that he's asked you to do. I know there are some other things that we need to do. Is it forgiving someone? Is it letting something go? Maybe you're just supposed to, maybe the next step is getting out of your seat and going over and praying for somebody else. Has God asked you to do that? and? Maybe you haven't done that. Maybe it's standing still long enough so that somebody can come and pray for you. Maybe you're up and out of your seat so fast and praying for other people. Maybe, maybe somebody wants to be blessed by praying for you. So, do I have music? Can I have, can I have music? Sorry, Nate, will you come? I don't, I don't even know what to do right now. It's, it's, <laughs> sorry. Thank you, Jesus. But can, please stand with me. Please stand with me. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, you're faithful. You're so faithful. Every time we gather, you're so faithful, God to the bringing of your word, God. We thank you, God. You're the comforter. You're the healer. And you're here every single time the doors are open at RPA. God, we thank you, God. I'm humbled by what it is that you've called us to do, what you've called me to be, God. And help us, God, reveal in us. You reveal in us, God, what it is that you need us to do, what it is that you need us to say to love, to forgive, to study, or to know. Whatever that thing is, God, that we need to overcome individually, God, to move us towards the top of our own hills so that we can have the perspective of a commander. I want the perspective of a commander, which is going to be from the top of my hill. Reveal to me, God, whatever is in the way, God, and what it is that I need to do to remove it. I know one thing is that the unity of this church, God, the ministers of RPA, that we come together, God, the unity of the church, how much power from the Holy Ghost when we're unified, when we're battling together, when we're commanding together.